Welcome to our class on Chassidus. We're going to be learning today a very, very special Hasidic discourse from the Rebbe. The Rebbe said this discourse on the second day of Rosh Hashanah in the year Tavshin Chavches, which is 52 years ago. And the reason why it's important to know that because the Rebbe said this discourse right after the Rosh Hashanah, after the Six Day War. And we'll make mention to it later in the discourse, the connection between the inspiration that was going on in the world at that time after the Six Day War. It's also very special because it's the last Hasidic discourse that the Rebbe edited, and he edited in the Rosh Hashanah, before Rosh Hashanah of the year, Tafshin Nun Beis, 28 years ago. It also happens to be a very, very powerful Hasidic discourse because the Rebbe makes a point to bring a teaching from one, every one of, not only the Chabad uh, Rebbe's, but also the Baal Shem Tov and the Magid. So in here we'll have teachings from the Baal Shem Tov, the Magid, the Alter Rebbe, the Mittler Rebbe, the Tzemach Tzedek, the Ren Arash, the Rishab, the previous Rebbe, and obviously the Rebbe's Chassidic Discourse. It's a very, very powerful Chassidic Discourse. The Chassidic Discourse is actually based on a verse in Isaiah, which we say in our Rosh Hashanah prayers, and the verse speaks about, in reference to the future, when Mashiach comes, so it says, Vahoya, it will be, by Yoimahu on that day, Yitaka b'shoifer gadol, they'll blow a shoifer gadol, a very, very big shofar, and what's going to happen when they blow the big shoifer, Vahu ha'oivdim b'eretz Asher, those that are lost in the land of Ashur, and those are the ejected in Be'eretz Mitzrayim, the land of Egypt, and they will all come, they're going to prostrate themselves, Bahar HaKodesh, in the holy mountain, Be'erushalayim, Ir HaKodesh. So that is the verse which the Hasidic Discourse is based on, and the name of the Discourse is actually called, It will be in that day, we're looking forward to Mashiach comes, when the great Shoifer, the Shoifer Gadol, is going to be sound. So the Rebbe starts off the discourse, I mentioned before, he's going to go through a teaching from every one of the Hasidic uh, te- uh, Rebbe's, and specifically the Chabad Rebbeim. So he starts off with a teaching from the Alter Rebbe, the first Chabad Rebbe. And the Alter Rebbe asks a question on a Hasidic discourse in the Kutta Torah, that um, the verse says, will be that day, he will blow by Shoifer Godel, this big Shoifer. A Shoifer is a Shoifer. What does it mean a big Shoifer? What, you know, as we're talking spiritually, there's a small shoifer, there's a big shoifer. But the, the verse says specifically it's going to be a big shoifer. So the author asks a simple question is, what is this quality and what is this pointing out that it's going to be some kind of powerful, a big shoifer? The author also asks, um, like, uh, like it's brought down in many other places to this. So it says, yitaka, the shoifer. It will blow in the shoifer. So it doesn't say who's blowing. Who is blowing the shoifer? The verse says, Yitaka. It's going to be blown. Someone's going to blow it. Who's blowing the shoifer? So the question is again, who is the one blowing the shoifer? Now the Rebbe brings again from the middle of the Rebbe. So we already had a teaching from the Alter Rebbe, or a question which is always a teaching. And now he brings from the middle of the Rebbe, the second Chabad Rebbe, that if you look at the way the word Yitaka is pronounced, so the tough yud, sof, kuf, ayin, so the sof has a kamat underneath it, which means yitaka, means it's going to blow by itself. The shoifer is going to give a blast by itself. So the question is, what does that mean it's going to blow by itself? No one's going to blow it? It's just, the the shofar is going to start giving off a sound? But again, obviously we're talking more on a spiritual level. What does it mean the shofar is going to be blown by itself? So the Rebbe explains, in short, uh, what, what they, what they br- uh, bring down in many Hasidic discourses, that what happens is, what's the whole idea of blowing the shoifer? The whole idea of blowing the shoifer, as the Rambam writes very clearly, the purpose of blowing the shoifer is to wake up. When you blow the shoifer, people wake up. We're not talking only physically waking up. We're talking spiritually waking up. We wake up to turn to Hashem. So, there, so, there, so it's brought down a Hasidic and it says that there's two types of shoifers. If somebody, for example, is close by, so you just need a regular shoifer. They're close by, so you blow a regular shoifer and they hear it. However, what does it speak about when Mashiach comes? The verse says, 
We have people that are going to be lost in Eretz Ashur. We're going to have people that are going to be totally dejected away in Eretz Mitzrayim. So these people, they're not close. We're talking spiritually, they're not close. They're totally far away. And we want them to come to hire a Kodesh to Yerushalayim and to prostrate to Hashem. If somebody's far away, a regular shofar is not going to work. You can need to have a shofar, a shofar God will a big shofar. So in simple and in short, the Rebbe says, the reason why it says shofar God because again, if somebody's close by, a regular shofar is going to do the job. So if someone, for example, is on Shul or Rosh Hashanah or the month of Elul, a regular shofar does the job. He's already there. So you want to, he wants to get a little closer. So the shofar will bring him a little closer. But what happens if you're trying to reach somebody that's not in Shul? Somebody that's totally out there lost, far away, so then you need the big shafer to bring him back in. So that's on a simple explanation which is brought down, obviously many of the discourses, and now the Rebbe is going to explain this, obviously, on a whole different, deeper and beautiful level. And the Rebbe says as follows. So we need to understand what's this whole idea of this big shafer, what's going to be in La- when Mashiach comes. So the... Uh, they explain in Chassidus and they say like this. We have to understand spiritually what is the idea behind blowing the shofar. So we all know that we have svirot. We have our intellect. We have our emotions. Intellect is called Chabad, Chachman Bin Adas. We have our emotions. Chesed Gurt, Feres, Nesachot, Yisrael, Malchus. We have our mind. We have our heart, etc. So what is the idea of you blowing the shofar? Spiritually, the idea of blowing the shofar is when a person calls out to Hashem from the essence of his heart, which is above intellect. Because generally we know intellect comes first, and from intellect comes emotions. So the emotions that come from the intellect, that's called your chitzonius of your emotions. But your primius of your emotions, primius alev is much stronger. So how do, you, how do you bring out your Pneum Yisale, which is much more powerful, through blowing the shofar? So when you blow the shofar, you're turning to Hashem, not only you're turning intellectually, that's for sure. Not only emotionally, we're talking Pneum Yisale. Now what happens is when you blow the shofar, whether you're blowing it or you're listening to the blowing of the shofar, and you hear the sound, so your Pneum Yisale, your essence of your heart, turns to Hashem. Now what happens when you turn to Hashem, for example, intellectually, so you got an intellectual response. If you turn to Hashem physically, you got a physical response. But what happens when you turn to Hashem from the essence of your heart? Then, the essence of Hashem, the Pneumius of Hashem, comes back to you. In other words, the Pneumius of, of, of the lave of Hashem comes to you. Which, what is that called, what's that called in the, in, in the world of Kabbalah and Chassidus? It's called the Ratzoyin Ha'elyon. Because we know, for example, in the Sefirot, we mentioned the 10 Sefirot starting with Chachma. But above Chachma, you have Keser. In Keser, what? You have Tainug and you have Ratzoyin. So the Ratzoyin Ha'elyon, the high level of Ratzoyin of Hashem, reaches out to you. What? Because you reached out to Hashem from your Primi Yeselev, so Hashem reaches out to you, which is called the Ratzoyin Ha'elyon. And the Rebbe brings the verse that says in the Prophets, Hashem Elohim Yitoka. That Hashem, our God, blows the shofar. What does that mean? When we blow our shofar down here, when we turn to Hashem, with our previous halev, Hashem blows his shofar. Which means he's also turning to us from his, from his essence. So the goal of blowing the shofar, it's important to know this, when you're in shul, whether you're the blowing the shofar or you're listening to the shofar is, is to draw our essence of who we are to Hashem, and that will cause Hashem to bring out His premius, His internal rotsa and His internal light, till Hashem's will and wishes will be revealed to us in a, in a real way. Now, so if that's the case, Kabbalistically, again, so what's the difference between, what's, what's the idea of blowing the shofar? Our premius alive, which causes Hashem's rotsa and alien to come down to us. So based on this, what's the, what's the difference between a shofar, a regular shofar, and, and shofar gadol? I mean, if it's your premius halev, could you get, could you get, could you get deeper into it? So it explains very simple. Because when you reach out to Hashem from your premius halev, there's many, many levels of depth. But then there's where it speaks of Hashem blowing the regular shofar. That means Hashem is 
his essence, his Ratzon Elyon, which is above the Svirot, gets revealed to us. Now, so that's a higher level than all the Svirot, which in the Kabbalah it's called, it's higher than the worlds. However, it has some kind of connection to the world. What is that called in Kabbalah? It's called Seviv Kalam. What does that mean? We know there's Mamali Kalam, the way Hashem's light is felt in the world. And then there's Seviv Kalam, Hashem's light is not necessarily felt in the world, it hovers over. But again, it's called Seviv Kalam, it has a connection to the world. However, what does Shoifer Gadol mean? That we're able to draw down the infinite light of Hashem, which is even much higher than have a connection to the world. And that's why Deborah explains if you, the, the verse that we, that we brought before from the prophets, uh, Prophet Zechariah, where it speaks about Hashem blowing the shofar. It says, Vashem Elohim, you talk of a shofar. So it uses names of Hashem. What is the idea of names of Hashem? It's powerful names. But guess what? It's still a name. It's a limited name. However, when it speaks about, when Mashiach comes, it says, it says, Yitaka. It doesn't say any name that's going to blow. Why doesn't it say? Because here it comes from a, such a deep place of Hashem, which is even higher than all names. So based on this, Rebbe explains a very simple difference between why it says, Shoifer Godel Yitaka, because a regular Shoifer only gets, draws down which part of Hashem, the part of Hashem which is connected to the world. However, with Shafer Godoil, you actually draw down from Hashem, which is totally above having any connection to the world. And that's obviously why it says Yitaka, because it's, it's, a, it's, 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 it's beyond um, any limitations of names and descriptions and so on and so forth. <clears throat> so now we know in Kabbalah, we can go even deeper. So now we're going to go even deeper into this idea of blowing this great Shafer. First explanation we have, which is again, it's higher than worlds. And it's beyond names, etc. But now we're going to go into it deeper. But now, again, as I told you before in the beginning of the class, the Rebbe is going to bring from every single Rebbe. So we already brought from the Alta Rebbe. We already brought from the Middle of the Rebbe. And now he's going to bring from the Tzemach Tzedek, the third Chabad Rebbe. And he explains like this. And he explains based on, we all know, and actually applies to us this year, that when Rosh Hashanah falls on Shabbat, so you don't blow the shofar. Rosh Hashanah is the mitzvah to blow the shofar. But when Rosh is connected, when it falls on Shabbat, and you don't blow the shofar. Where don't you blow the shofar? Anywhere in the world. You go into any shul, any Chabad house, any uh, group that's having a minion for Rosh Hashanah, you don't blow the shofar on Shabbos. Sunday, they'll blow it, not on Shabbos. Any other week, depending on when it falls out. But this year, Shabbos, no one blows the shofar. However, in the times of the Beis Hamikdash, they did blow the shofar on Shabbos. So the question is, A, how come we don't blow the shofar on Shabbos? We know it's a mitzvah to blow the shofar on, Shabbos, uh, on Rosh Hashanah. And how come on, Sh on Shabbos we don't blow it? And the other hand, what's the distinction why in all over the world you don't blow the shofar on Shabbos, but on the base English you do blow the shofar on Shabbos? Shabbos explains like this. <clears throat> what's the reason why we blow the shofar? Again, there's many reasons. But we gave one reason before, to wake up. On a spiritual reason, one of the reasons why, on a Kabbalistic level, why do we blow the shofar? We blow the shofar as follows. Hashem is the king of the world. He created the world, he maintains the world, he runs the world. Now, if Hashem is running the world and giving us everything that we need, giving us life, giving us sustenance, everything we have comes from Hashem, you want Hashem to do it because he has to? Or because he's enjoying to do it. You want Hashem to do it because he loves us? So the goal is Hashem should love us. In Kabbalah it's called, Hashem should want to cre create and or recreate and maintain the world because he wants to. He's happy to. In Kabbalah it's called Tainuk. Hashem should have Tainuk. Hashem should have pleasure in creating the world. Now, so what happens in Rosh Hashanah? On Rosh Hashanah, we stop what we're doing and we turn to Hashem and we blow the shofar, which means we blow from the depths of our heart through the shofar. And we say, Hashem, we want you. Tell me, Hashem, we want you to be a king over us. Hashem, see, here is all Jews from all over the world reaching out to him and blowing the shofar from the depths of the heart that we, that, that we want Hashem to be a king. Hashem puts a big smile on his face. And he goes, sure, with pleasure. What's sure with pleasure in the worlds of Kabbalah? Sure with pleasure is Tainuk. So Rosh Hashanah, our job in Rosh Hashanah is 
that to affect an Hashem that he should have tainug, he should have deep Kabbalistic spiritual pleasure in creating and maintaining and, and, and rededicating himself to the world again for another year. Now, so what happens? On Shabbos, we know Shabbos is a, a day of Tainug. Shabbos is Tainug. So the, why? Because think about Shabbos. Shabbos, Hashem said, work for six days, rest for seven. So when you do 24 hours, and we know it's very, very hard for many, many people, but as hard as it is, we, we do it because Hashem told us to do. The Karasala Shabbos earning, we call Shabbos not just a day, oh, I can't do this. No! Shabbos is a day of pleasure. It's 24 hours, 25 hours with Hashem. So Shabbos within itself is an oinig. So because Shabbos is a day of oinig, and Hashem appreciates the oinig, and Hashem loves the fact that we observe Shabbat, so Shabbos has oinig. So you don't need to blow the shofar on Shabbos. Again, because spiritually, the idea of blowing the shofar is to create tainug. Shabbos creates tainug. So on Shabbos, you don't have to blow the shofar. So if that's the case, that Shabbos, you don't have to blow the shofar because Shabbos is tainug. So why are we blowing the shofar in, 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 in the temple? So we know that when it comes to tainug, pleasure, there's many, many levels. There's many levels in, 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 in pleasure. Now, because there's many levels, so when you blow the shoifer regular, it's tainuk, whatever the number is, one to 10, whatever level it reaches. Let's say, let's say for example, it reaches 10 even. And Shabbos, let's even say one to 10, it's 10. So the same, it matches up. However, in the base of Migdash, because it's the holiest place in the world, we all know when you go to Israel, and you go to Jerusalem, and you go to the Western Wall, how you feel the holiness, and can you imagine how much holier it is when the base of Migdash is standing? So because it's so, so much more holier, so the tiny that's caused by blowing the shofar specifically in the base of Migdash is much greater than a regular Shabbos. So therefore, because we can affect greater tiny within Hashem, so therefore it's a mitzvah to blow the shofar on Shabbos in the Temple. In other words, like this, to use Kabbalistic terminology. You know, in the Svirot, there's 10 Svirot. Sometimes we count Kesser as one, sometimes we don't. But let's say in this case we use count Kesser as one because we're talking about Tainug. And Tainug is in Kesser. So Derby explains like this. Shabbos is Tainug. But what level of Tainug? And the answer is the level of Tainug on Shabbos is called Chitsoinius HaKesser. The external part of the crown of Hashem. The external part of the spheroids. The part, in Kesar, there's the internal part and the external part. So the tining of Shabbos is the external part of the spheroids, which is the source of all, all, of all people that Hashem created. So Shabbos, you reach Chitoni Yisak Kesar. Chitoni Kesar reaches us. Shoy Rishon Etzalim. However, when you blow the shoifer, in the temple, you actually reach Pnimi Yisak Kesar, which is not, which is, not the sh it's the shayrish of us, it's actually the lower part of the creator. So there's different levels. So we cannot reach that level. So there's no reason to blow the shayfar on Shabbos. However, in the temple, you can reach the higher level of Tainug, and therefore you blow the shayfar on Shabbos. Now, the Tzemach Tzedek, as we mentioned before, the Rebbe is going to go through every one of the Rebbeim. So the Tzemach Tzedek continues, and he says like this, even in this Pneumius HaKesar, which is the higher level, which is, the, the, which is basically the lower level of the Creator, even over there there's many levels. And, there, and he explains as follows. Take for example, we all know, we had, so far we had two temples. God will, we're going to have the third, and that'll be the last one, and that's going to be the end of Gullus. But so far we had two temples. In the first temple... So the Tzemach Tzedek says that the tainug, the pleasure you were able to achieve in the first temple by blowing the shofar is much greater than the second temple. So even in the tainug where you reach Pneumius Haratzin of Hashem and Sherish and Atzalim, in the first temple is much higher. Not only that, we know in the temple you blew the shofar on, Sha on, on Rosh Hashanah, even on Shabbos, obviously. And then you also blew the shofar on Yom Kippur, the holiest day of the year, in the Jubilee year. 
And that applied only in the first temple. The Jubilee was only in the first temple. And that's even higher than the Shafer of Rosh Hashanah. What does it mean it's higher? Because obviously it's able to reach a place more premious than you would reach on a Rosh Hashanah. Now, so here the, the Semach Tzedek shows you that what? That there's different levels in Tainuk. There's again, there's Tainuk of blowing the shofar regular, which is equal to Shabbos. There's Tainuk of blowing the shofar in the temple. And then there's even a higher Tainuk of blowing the shofar in the first temple versus the second one. And even a higher one when you blow the shofar in the Jubilee year in Yom Kippur. Now, so let's take the highest Tainug, which is basically blowing the shofar in the temple, the first temple on Yom Kippur. What does the verse say about blowing that shofar? It says, "V'havarta shofar trua." What does it say in the verse? Shofar. Does it say shofar gadol? No, it doesn't say the big shofar. V'havarta shofar. So, in other words, even the highest level of blowing the shofar in the temple, the first temple, Yom Kippur, it's only called shofar, it's not called shofar gadol. So what do we see from here? That when Mashiach comes, you talk about shofar gadol, that shofar gadol is going to be even greater. The revelation is going to be greater than even the revelation that took place in the first temple, in the Jubilee of Yom Kippur, which obviously is very, very high, but it doesn't come to the big shofar, that was going to be when Mashiach comes. Now, so obviously we, we see that the shofar God when Mashiach is going to come is going to be much, much stronger and much greater. So we're going to take that a step further also. I know it's like this. So this shofar God, we're intrigued now. This is big shofar, it's powerful. So the Rebbe says that this shofar God, which is going to be when Mashiach comes, it's actually higher than another shofar. We knew when Hashem gave us the Torah, so it says in the Torah, there was a sound of a shofar. And again, what does it say? Does it say shofar gadol? No, a regular shofar. So in other words, the Hayyubiyam who Mashiach comes, shofar gadol is exclusive, it's unique, it's very powerful. We already mentioned all the details about the base of English is much higher, but even by Martin Torah it's much higher. Now it does say it was a, it was a, um, there was a Kaila Shafer was Heilach for Chazok, it was strong, uh, and etc. But that was the sound of the Shafer. But the Shafer itself, the place from where the sound came from, it doesn't say it was, God, it was a big Shafer. So we see that what? That that Shafer is going to be even greater. And Rabbi Bar actually brings an interesting Madras from uh, Pirkei the, the Rebbe Lezer, and he says like this, um, which is very powerful. He says that we all know that one of the reasons why we love Shafer on Rosh Hashanah is to remind Hashem of the famous story with the Akedah. When Abraham was commanded by Hashem to bring up his son Yitzchak, Isaac, on the altar, so he brought him to the altar. He's ready. Hashem, I'm ready. We say it every single day in our prayers in the morning. But we know Hashem didn't want him, didn't want him to slaughter his son. So he said, stop! Don't slaughter him. So Avram says, what do you mean? You brought me here? I'm ready to do it. Obviously, you don't want me to do it, but I have all this passion, this energy. I want to sacrifice something to you. So Hashem says, okay. And he turned around. There was a ram there, and he slaughtered the ram. And because of that, as a, to, to remind Hashem, you know, Abraham, our, our great-grandfather, the one that was dedicated his life to you. And, we, and that's one of the reasons why we blow the story from Rosh Hashanah. So Pirkei Dabla says like this. That the ram that Abraham brought up as a sacrifice instead of Yitzchak. So there was, we know that the ram has two horns. It has a right horn and there's a left horn. There's two horns. So the Pirkei says like this. The left horn, which is obviously the weaker one, that's the shofar, the sound of the left was heard in Har Sinai. However, the one on the right, we know right is always stronger. Right is always much more powerful. That's the ram, the sound that's going to be blown on when Mashiach comes, the Shafer Gadol. As we know, it says, but you talk about Shafer Gadol, the big one, the right one. Now, so the question is, why is it that the Shafer of Matan Torah is a regular Shafer? However, the Shafer when Mashiach comes, that's going to be what? The big Shafer. 
So here the Rebbe brings a, a teaching from the middle of the Rebbe. You see, he keeps on bringing back all the, all the Chabad Rebbeim teachings because I, by sharing and teaching them, you're actually connecting them on a spiritual level. Rosh Hashanah, we want to connect to all the Rebbeim. So he explains from the, from the, from the middle of the Rebbe and he says like this. Let's think about it. Matan Torah, where was everybody? Everybody was on Har Sinai. Everyone left Egypt. They were with the Klai souls together as one big family. And they're all at Har Sinai. So the Mithil Rebbe says, on Matan Torah, were they close to Hashem? Or were they far away from Hashem? They were close. They were all there by Har Sinai. So because they were all by Har Sinai, they were close. So do you need a big shofar? They're already there. A regular shofar will do the job. However, when it comes, when Mashiach comes, and as we know, we're not all sitting today in Eretz Yisrael. We're not even. We're not. We're, we're not all necessarily. Not all Jews go to shul. You have people that they don't even know. Maybe there's a shul that they, they have a connection to Yiddish Kai. You have people from all walks of life. You have people all different philosophies. Some people feel lost or dejected and don't even know that they're Jewish and don't even know their connection to Hashem. So you have many people that aren't close. So because they're not close, physically or spiritually, a regular shofar is not going to do the job. So since we have to wake up all the people that are lost and dejected all over the world, so therefore you need to have a big shofar. Teaching from the, uh, teaching from the, from the, uh, uh, from the middle of the Rebbe. So again, to be clear, the middle of the was saying that what? Why in the temple was a regular shofar enough? Because everyone was close. Moshenko and Mashiach comes, you need a big shofar, because you need to bring people from all over the place. Based on this, the Mitzvah Rebbe explains not only why it says a big shofar, we know why it says a big shofar, because you have to bring people from all over the place. That's why it also says yitaka. What does yitaka mean? It's going to blow by itself. We asked the question, what does it mean it's blowing by itself? Who's blowing the shofar? So he explains spiritually, what does it mean when something's blowing by itself? So we know in Kabbalah, there's two, there's two terminologies. There's something which is called Isarusa de la Tata, and there's something which is called Isarusa de la Eila. Isarusa de la Tata means when you're doing the work. Isarusa de la Eila is when you get a gift from Hashem. So when Mashiach comes, and Jews are going to be all over the world physically and spiritually, and some like, as, as the verse says, Oivdim and Edachim, lost and ejected all over the world. And the shofar gadol is going to blow and will bring them in from all over the place. So are they coming because they're inspired to come? Or are they coming because the sound is just drawing them in? They're coming because the sound is drawing them in. So in Kabbalah it's called Isarusa de la Eila. It means it's a gift from Hashem. Because it's a gift from Hashem, so what are they doing? Nothing. It's not their work. It's Hashem pulling them in by blowing this big shofar. So since it's Hashem pulling them in, because of the big shoifer, that's why it says yitaka. What does yitaka mean? Not you're blowing the shoifer. On Rosh Hashanah, we blow the shoifer. We're in shul. We're hearing the shoifer. We're part of it. We're part of the process. But when Mashiach comes, many people are not going to be part of the process. So that because it pulls it in, yitaka means that it's, it's coming from a gift from above versus we're doing our avodah. So based on this, we have insight why, again, it says a big shofar, because we have to draw the people in from all over. And you talk it because it's a gift from above, because the, the sound is going to bring people in from all over the world. Now, the Rebbe goes into another important idea in the Hasidic discourse, and he says like this. After the Alter Rebbe talks about the whole idea of blowing the big shofar, so he talks about another idea that it speaks about in reference to Rosh Hashanah. So in reference to Rosh Hashanah, so it says as follows. It says, Zehayoim, this is the day, Tchilas um, Masecha, the beginning of your actions, Zikaroin Liyoim Rishon. So the author explains as follows. Zehayoim, think about it, Zehayoim, this day, Rosh Hashanah, is the beginning of your actions. And then it says, it's also, remember, Zikaron, it's a commemoration for the first day. So the rabbi asks a simple question. What does it mean, Tchilas Masecha? When did Hashem create the world? We know 5,780 years ago. Hashem created the world a long time ago. So since Hashem created the world 5,781 years ago, we're going into 81 now, 
So what does it mean, Tchilas Mas Zeha Yoyim? This is the day Tchilas Masecha? No, it's not today, it's not Tchilas Masecha. But the answer is very simple. Because we know that every single Rosh Hashanah, Hashem recreates the world. On a spiritual level, He creates it every single second. But in Rosh Hashanah, in a big way, Hashem recreates the world. Literally like He created it the first time. So Zeha Yoyim, when we say in Rosh Hashanah, Zeha Yoyim, today is the day. Today Rosh Hashanah is Tchilas Masecha. Spiritually, we mean it literally. Hashem right now recreated the world just like in the first day of creation. Now, if that's the case, what does it mean, Zikaroin? It's a commemoration for the first day. It's only a commemoration. <clears throat> and the, the, Rebbe, the, the Rebbe explains like this. When Hashem originally created the world, why did He create the world? Why did Hashem create the world? Only one reason. Ki chafetz chesedhu. Hashem decided to do some chesed. He tried to do, decide to do something kind. And He decided to create the world as a gift. Hashem created the world as a gift. Now, <clears throat> today, why is Hashem recreating the world? You know why? Because we're coming to shul, and we're praying, and we're beseeching God, and we're blowing the shofar, and we say, Hashem, we love you. Thank you for creating the world. Thank you for maintaining the world. We're going to follow you. We're committed. And please, be king over us. So, in other words, like this. When Hashem originally created the world, what did we do? Nothing. It was a gift. Hashem gave it to us. The words, in the words of Kabbalah, it's called Isurus Adel Eila. It was 100% a gift from Hashem. What happens now? Why is Hashem recreating the world? In Kabbalah, it's called Isus Adel Tata, because we reached out to Hashem. So based on this, the Alter explains very simple. What does that mean? Today, Hashem is recreating the world. It's Tchila, it's the beginning. Zikaroin, it's only a commemoration of the beginning, because when Hashem originally created the world, it's for a different reason. The reason was, Hashem chose to be kind. Now Hashem is created, recreating the world because, it's, because we beseeched Hashem. It's called the Susan Little Tata. We, we, we asked Hashem to, and Hashem was inspired. <clears throat> and like we see, for example, when we pray, Hashem says, Imru we, 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 we turn to Hashem. We say, Malchia is Hashem, we want you to be king over us, and we want you to, uh, to, to remember us, and we want we blow the shoifer. It's all about that we want Hashem, Hashem to be, to, should, should want and have pleasure in creating the world. Now, <clears throat> the question is a very simple question. Hashem originally created the world, why? He chose to create the world. Ki chafetz chesed. Now He's creating the world, why? Because... Isus al Tata, we're, 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 we're beseeching Hashem to create the world. But why? Why do you need, in Kabbalah it's called Avoid this Adam, why do we need Hashem for us to ask Him to create the world? When He created the world the first time, He didn't, he didn't need us. He just created it. He didn't wait for us to ask Him. So why does He want us now to ask Him? So the Rebbe explains the very, very powerful Kabbalistic idea, and he says like this When Hashem originally created the world, he chose to create the world. Ratzain, Tainum, he had a desire, he had a, he had a will. Ratzain and Tainug is where? In Kesser. That means the source why Hashem created the world, as it says in Kabbalah, Hashem had a desire. Desire is where? It's one of the spheres. It's the highest sphere. It's Kesser, it's Tainug, it's Ratzain. Hashem wanted to, he had a desire to. So in other words, when Hashem originally created the world, yes, excuse me, Ki Chafetz Chesedu, Hashem chose to do good. But what's the source of that Chafetz Chesed? Rotten and Tainuk. However, once Hashem created the world, and we beseech Hashem to, to, to keep on creating the world, what is the Shreirish of Nasram Yisrael? What's our source? Is our source in Rotzayin? In Tainuk? No, it's much deeper. Our source is in Atmos, the essence of Hashem. Our source is in the essence of Hashem. So here's the difference, powerful difference. In the beginning when Hashem created the world, it was Ki Chafetz Chesed to Chafetz. Chafetz comes from Ratzayin. It's because Hashem wanted to. Hashem had a, a, a Tainug. That's all in the spheres of Keser. Higher level of Keser, lower level of Keser. So the Shreirish, the source of the world, is in Keser. 
However, once Hashem created the world, and now we beseech Hashem. So why is He, why is he recreating the world? Because we reached out to Him. Where do we t- sit? We sit much higher than the spheroids. We sit in the essence of the world. So what happens is, the Shairish from the world, once we beseech Hashem, is from a much deeper place. <clears throat> so now, here comes a big question. What are we saying? When Hashem created the world, it was Chafik Svesetu. Which means, Surus of Leil, Hashem decides to do it. What happens in Rosh Hashanah? We beseech Hashem. Isurus the Tata. Why do we beseech Hashem? Because obviously it's much more powerful. Why? Because Hashem wants and likes the Isurus because it, it reaches a much deeper place and we draw down a much greater energy because we're reaching Atmos of Hashem. <clears throat> what we explained before, the big Shaifer. Why? Because you have to bring in people from all over the place. And we say, Yitaka me atzmoy. Hashem is the one that's going to pull them in. So we're going back, we're going back a few steps, if that's the case. We're going back to a gift from Hashem. We just learned the power of us beseeching Hashem. We're doing the work and we're reaching atzmoy, the essence of Hashem. What has the big Bashaifer God or the big Shaifer? Yitaka, it's coming from itself. So we're actually going down. Knows when Mashiach comes, you talk about Shaifer Gadol, the big Shaifer. What big? If Hashem is giving it, it's not so big. If we do it, it's much greater, it's much more powerful. So we have to, again, we have to address this issue. Is it coming, by, yeah, by, by the big Shaifer Mashiach comes, is it coming from above or is it coming from below? It's seemingly it's coming from above. If it's coming from above, that's actually a downgrade. When it's coming from below, it's much stronger, much more powerful. So the Rebbe explains, <coughs> based on what it says in the Chesedic Discourse there, that this, that when Mashiach comes, we're going to blow the big shaifer. So it actually, it is connected to our shaifer. Why? Because why do we blow the shaifer today? It's a mitzvah. It's a commandment. Now when Mashiach comes, it says the mitzvah is not going to, not going to go away. We're going to have mitzvahs when Mashiach comes also. So the fact that we blow the shaifer today, it's a mitzvah. When Mashiach comes, it's also going to be a mitzvah. And the Rebbe explains like this. <clears throat> so, the same mitzvah to blow the shayfar today, when Mashiach comes, by Yom, who you talk about Shayfar Gadol, is going to be a connection. So, notice when we read the verse from Isaiah, where it says, by Yom, who referring to Mashiach comes, you're going to blow the big shayfar. So, seeming, what's the connection with Rosh Hashanah? That's when Mashiach comes, and now it's Rosh Hashanah. And that's Milmaila, and this is Milmata. What's the connection? So on one hand, the Rebbe says, very simple, because just like it's a mitzvah to blow the shofar today, it, mitzvahs don't go away, and we're also going to blow the shofar then as well. But what's the connection with Rosh Hashanah? And the Rebbe explains, explains as follows. It's brought down in the Gemara, and the Gemara says like this. There's, an, there's a debate. When Mashiach's coming. We all want to know when is Mashiach coming. So there's a debate in the Talmud. What's the, what's, the, what's the debate in the Talmud? One opinion is that Mashiach is going to come in the month of Tishrei. This month, coming up, the month of Rosh Hashanah, the month of Tishrei, Mashiach is coming. So get ready and start packing your bags. And Mashiach is coming in the month of Tishrei. There's another opinion that Mashiach is coming when? In the month of Nisan. What's the, what's the reason why one says Tishrei, one says Nisan? So we'll deal with Nisan first. One that says Nisan, the month of Nisan, because guess what? We went out of Egypt in the, in the month of Nisan, so we're going to go out of uh, this colors in the month of Nisan. That's one opinion. Why? What's the reason why we say you're gonna, we're going to go out of this Golos in the month of Tishrei? Very simple. Because it says um, we blow the Shafer in the month of Tishrei. And it says, you talk about God, you're going to blow the big Shafer. So since we, we blow the Shafer now, and it speaks about blowing the Shafer, so obviously we're going to blow the Shafer in the month of Tishrei. <clears throat> but the question then is, what are we saying? What's, why is Mashiach coming in the month of Tishrei? Because you're going to blow the big shayfer. But one second. That would be all right if it's the same type of shayfer. We just learned, no, Mashiach comes, it's going to be a gift from above. Our shayfer is our work. So what's the connection? Two different shayfers, spiritually. This one's coming as a gift from Hashem, and this is our, our shayfer. So, 
And we all know what's the reason why that it's more avoid this other in, in this in, when we blow the shay for now, because we all know when Hashem, when Hashem created the world. What when did Hashem create the world? Actually, today when I'm giving the class on the 25th day of Elul, Hashem created the world. Creation of man is not till Rosh Hashanah on the sixth day of creation. But why do we celebrate Rosh Hashanah on the sixth day of creation? Because it's all about avoid this other when man came along and he said boy Let's recognize Hashem. So Rosh Hashanah is all about avoid this other. It's all about doing our avoid. So if that's the case, so then why isn't there a connection between blowing the big shayfar when Mashiach comes if you're connecting the two shayfars? So that's one, one issue with this whole idea of saying that when Mashiach comes, it's going to be a gift from above. The second thing the Rebbe says is a very, very sim- uh, important question because we know Torah comes from the word of Hayra, which means a lesson. When you learn Torah, you have to always ask yourself, what kind of a lesson can I learn? And how is this going to help me in my life? Physically, spiritually, emotionally. And Torah has all the answers. You have to dig. So once you learn the basic teaching, now you have to ask yourself, what is, what's the teaching over here? Now, and usually if you learn and you, you meditate, you'll find some powerful insight. But what do we just say? Mashiach comes, they're going to blow the big shoifer, boom, everyone's going, to, everyone's going to be gathered. All the, everyone's, going to be, everyone's going to be pulled in to, to go to, 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 to Yerushalayim or Kodesh. But how's that coming from above? So what's the, what's the work there? If you're saying Mashiach comes, the shoifer's going to go, and then you're going to have to do your work. Fine, I get it. They're waking me up to do the work. They're waking me up, I shouldn't do anything? What, what's the lesson in that? So now the Rebbe is going to explain this powerful idea of what's the whole idea of blowing the shayfar. Now, as I mentioned again before, just to keep us on, on target, the Rebbe is going to weave in from every single Rebbe. So he already brought the Alta Rebbe and the Mittal Rebbe and the Tzamat So we're holding now by the Rebbe Marash. And he brings a very, very beautiful and powerful and important teaching in reference to Rosh Hashanah with the, Alter, with the Rebbe Marash explains as follows. So if you give a look at a shayfar, the way a shoifer is structured, the physical structure of a shoifer, it's narrow, and then it becomes wider. Whether it's a small shoifer, a big shoifer, that's the general makeup of every shoifer. It's in, this, it's in the physical uh, DNA of a shoifer. It's small, and then it gets wider. What's the idea behind it? So we all know the famous verse that says, Min ha-meitzar karasi yudkei, anani b'merchav yudkei. What does that mean? So in order to create, when you blow in the shafer, it creates a big sound, it has to be even a mate, so it has to be a tight spot. If it was a big spot, how are you creating the, how are you creating the blast? Because it's a small spot and you're putting in the blowing from the small spot, when the noise comes out, it comes out very, very big. So on a physical level, is that when you blow in a small, a small tight spot, you come out a big spot. What does that mean spiritually? Very, very simple. The Rabbi the, 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 the Marash explains very simply that on a spiritual level, when a person reaches out to Hashem, min ha-meitzar, when things are tight, spiritually, and you're struggling, and you're going through challenges in life, and, in, and from and in the challenge, you turn to Hashem, min ha-meitzar, things are tight, and things are tough, but you turn to Hashem, so you, that's how you call karasi yudke, that's how you call Hashem, so then Hashem answers you with, whoa, over the top, huge blessings of success on all levels. Teaching from the Rebbe Marash. And then he, based on this, he says as follows, that every single year, Sharosha Batchila, which means it's tight in the beginning, it's challenging in the beginning. Misash Eres it's going to be rich at the end. So what does that mean, that it's Rosh Batchila? And he explains, when we beseech Hashem, when things are challenging, and we have every reason, maybe not necessarily to do what we're supposed to, to learn and daven and pray and do all the mitzvot, but we do it anyway. Guess what? Hashem responds with huge blessings. And uh, the Rebbe Marash actually explains <coughs> the power of a poor person's prayer versus a rich man's prayer. And again, we're not talking only physically, uh, financially poor and rich. We're talking about spiritually. When someone is broken spiritually, you know, I have a relation with Hashem. It's not as great as it should be. And a person struggling to pray and study and to advance in Judaism for yourself and your family, community, etc. So he explains the difference between a, a poor person versus a rich person. A rich person says, ah, life is good. 
I know the whole Torah, I pray, uh, whatever I pray is more than enough, I give enough uh, charity, I ready to do all the mitzvot. That's a rich man, he's satisfied with his lot. He's not looking, he's not struggling to grow. So the Rebbe Marash explains there's a major difference between a poor person's prayer and a rich person's prayer, and he says like this, in two ways. Number one, he's, the Rebbe Marash says, in the prayer itself, in the prayer itself. And here the Rebbe brings, the Rebbe Rosh, who brings from the Baal Shem Tov, because we mentioned we're going to bring all the Rebbeim all the in here, and the uh, two Chassidic Rebbeim, the Baal Shem Tov and the Magids. He brings from the Baal Shem Tov. And the Baal Shem Tov brings the famous verse that says, Tfilah la'ani, a prayer for a poor person, ki yatoif, lefnei Hashem yishba sichoi. So what does the, what does the Rebbe Marash explain based on the Baal teaching? That one point with a poor person is, when a poor person prays, because he's praying from the depth of his heart, he reaches the premius, he comes face to face with Hashem. And the Rebbe says the only way to really come to have really face to face with Hashem on a physical and a spiritual level, or actually the premius Hashem, it could be even higher than Hashem, but at a high level of Hashem, the essence of Hashem, you come close to one with Hashem, it has to be a tefillah's ani. You have to feel like you're lacking. Because if you feel like you have everything, how are you praying? So if you don't feel a want, if you don't have a need, how are you going to get that high? So there has to be some kind of emptiness. That's one point. The second point that Rabbi Marash says, the difference between a poor person's prayer and a rich person's prayer, and he says like this, that when a poor person prays for something, guess what? And he gets it, the pleasure is huge because he didn't have it. Versus if you have everything and you get a bigger gift and another gift, it doesn't create any tiny in your life. You already have all the tiny that you can have. So the point that Rabbi Marash is saying is that a poor person Prayer is two things. One is he reaches, his prayers are much stronger and it reaches a much higher place. And B, he gets tremendous pleasure from a prayer, from the prayer and the results of the prayer. So based on this, the Rebbe explains as follows. What's the connection again between the big, blowing the big shoifer and Rosh Hashanah? Because why do we, why are they going to blow the big shoifer when Mashiach comes? Because there's people that are lost there are people that feel dejected and totally alienated and they have to be brought back. So the Rebbe says the people that are lost and dejected and alienated and totally disconnected, they are what? They are in a Meitzar. They are in a place where it's, it's tight spiritually. What they know they're not it's irrelevant, but the fact is they're coming from a place of Meitzar. But when the big Shafer is going to blow, that's going to cause an awakening in them to turn to Hashem, and when they turn to Hashem, guess what? Someone that's lost and dejected and feels hopeless and helpless and lack of love and any connection, and they get that, whoa, that's going to be a huge turnaround for them. That's going to bring them lefnei Hashem. That's going to give them tremendous tainug. So that's basically the connection between Bayoim Ohu Yitaka B'Shef and Rosh Hashanah, because there is a connection. Because the whole essence of Rosh Hashanah, you're blowing the shayfim from your meitzar, from, from, from challenges. You have the greatest success, the poor person's prayer. When Mashiach comes, who is the oiv, the oiv, them, and the nendachim, they're going to be, they are in a place of meitzar. And they're going to return to Hashem. Now, the Rebbe goes on to say that what happens is, not only are the people that are lost, alienated, and dejected, will return, but there's actually going to be a spiritual elevation in the places they went to. Wherever a Jew is, anywhere in the world, as far and as disconnected and alienated the person is, those places are going to be transformed. Why? Because think about it. Because when they return, so all the places they were, they elevate the places that they were in. You know, through the, through the, 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 the um, Meitzar, the constraints of exile, and specifically those that were lost and alienated and disconnected, and the, the big shoifer is going to awaken them to return, they're going to reach a much greater place than they were before. And when they reach that place, all the places that hosted them, anywhere in the world, it doesn't have to be far away, it could be, it could be, spirit, it could be physically very close, but spiritually very far. 
then those places, as the, as the prophet calls it, Asher and Etz places that are spiritually disconnected, they will be elevated as well. And um, <clears throat> based on the it goes on to say, another deeper connection between, because we're trying to find the connection between the Shoei God when Mashiach comes, and Rosh Hashanah. So the first connection was, they're both been a mate. But there was another, another, another major connection, and that's as follows. Because we know on Rosh Hashanah, there's two things that take place in Rosh Hashanah. One is, as we said before, the world was created today, Chav 25th of El. Rosh Hashanah is the way the day man was created. Mankind was created. Now, when, the, when mankind turns to, turn, returns and turns to Hashem, there's an elevation not only in us, in the human being, but also in the, in the world. And like, and again, now, as we mentioned before, the, the, the Rebbe is going to bring in every single Rebbe. So we read the Alter Rebbe, the Mittler Rebbe, the Tzedek Tzedek, the Rebbe Marash, and now he brings in the Rebbe Rashab. And the Rebbe Rashab says like this. <clears throat> we already discussed this, this, this verse that says that um, the Roshan is on the first day of creation. So if that's the case, why do we call it only a commemoration to the first day? Why is it a commemoration of the first day? If, if the Rosh Hashanah is on the sixth day of creation, it's not a commemoration to the first day of creation. If you, it can be a commemoration to the, to the sixth day of creation. What's the connection to the first day of creation? So the Rebbe, so the Rebbe Hashanah explains very, very powerful, and he says like this. When Hashem created the world, what was the reason why He created the world? Because we said Chafetz, He wanted to create the world. The wanting to create the world came from chitzonius eratzin or premius eratzin. The world, it's a physical world. It came from the external will of Hashem. Was Hashem's goal just to create a world? No, because the proof is he kept on creating things. What he created in the sixth day of creation and he stopped. The last thing he created was mankind. So in other words like this. Did Hashem want to create the world? Yes. But was that his ultimate goal? No. So it's called chitzonius eratzin, the external will. Mankind... That was, what he, that was his goal, to create the man to, to elevate the world. So mankind is premius Yisaratzin, which is connected really to the 25th day of Elul and Rosh Hashanah. 25th day of Elul is, Chitzar, is the birthday of Chitzayin Yisaratzin. Rosh Hashanah is connected to Primi Yisaratzin. Now, so therefore what happens like this. On Rosh Hashanah there's two things that take place. One thing of Rosh Hashanah is Tchilas Masecha. So before we gave one in insight, this is already now from the Rebbe Shabbat, a different insight. Tchilas Masecha means that the essence of the infinite light of Hashem comes down in this world and is revealed through Avoid Adam. So the sixth day of creation, the Pneumius Haratzin was, was affected. And that draws down the essence of Hashem. Through the essence of Hashem that's drawn down on the sixth day of creation, which is Rosh Hashanah, that creates the and the Enrish, and that creates an elevation in the world. <clears throat> so based on this, Rebbe explains, that's the connection between Yitok HaBashay Gadol and Rosh Hashanah. Why? Because what's Rosh Hashanah? On Rosh Hashanah, the essence of Hashem gets revealed in the world, which elevates the first day, which is creation. So the same thing also happens when, when, when they're going to blow the big shoifer. They're going to blow the big shoifer, which brings the people back, but also creates, as we mentioned before, an elevation in Eretz Asher, in the land and in the actual world, world itself. And Rebbe goes on now to, to, he actually brings another teaching again from the Rebbe Marash, who we already mentioned before, that... Um, What's the whole idea, the Rebbe Rosh mentioned before, that Rosh Hashanah is men HaMetzar. We turn to Hashem, we're, when, when through the struggle. Now, so there's two types of struggles. There's one you literally are lacking, and men HaMetzar, I don't have. I don't have, and I'm turning to Hashem, and again, it can be physically, spiritually, emotionally, men HaMetzar, I'm turning to Hashem. That's one type of not having. And by not having, you cause merchad, you cause tremendous abundance. If you turn to Hashem and say, listen, Hashem, I need your help, Hashem will help you. But then, the Rebbe says something more powerful. What happens if you try to do the right thing? 
you pray, you study, you do the mitzvot, you work on your midot, you're kind, you're charitable, you try to more or less be, you can't be really be perfect, but you try to do all the right things that Hashem wants you, at least with the, with the abilities that you have. <clears throat> so then, could you have Rosh Hashanah? How are you going to have Min HaMetzar? You know, you're saying, life is good, I'm happy, life is good. So where's the Min HaMetzar? So the Rebbe says, and this is powerful, the Min HaMetzar comes from what? From Bittal. The Min HaMetzar comes from humility. Which means, even though you believe that with all the gifts that you have, you're doing your avayda, you're doing your spiritual work, and it's complete. However, because of your bittel, because of your, your, your humility, you feel like, Min HaMetzar. You're lacking. You know, not necessarily physically, but you humble yourself. And when a person hum humbles himself, so you created a Min HaMetzar, and because you created a Min HaMetzar, by being humble, guess what? You'll have the Merchav. So what the Rebbe is saying is you don't have to literally be in a, in a Min HaMetzar to turn to Hashem. Through humility, you can turn to Hashem. <clears throat> Based on this, that Min HaMetzar can be created through Bittal, the Rebbe explains as follows. Let's look, let's look about the idea when Mashiach comes, who you talk about Shefer Gadol, and who is it going to bring back? The people that are oivdim, nedachim, lost, dejected, disconnected, etc. Now, so what does that mean? When Mashiach comes, a big Shefer is going to blow, big revelation, and unless you're dejected, and unless you're disconnected, you're not going to have the benefit of that big Shefer? No. The purpose is very simple. Because even when Shia comes and you pray and you study and you do all the mitzvot and life is great, but you, 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 you think for a second and you say to yourself, let's even say I'm, trying, I'm scoring 100, if you, if you believe that. But you're doing the best you can with the abilities you have. And it's a good attitude to have as well. It's good for your self-esteem. But what happens is you think for a second, I'm doing amazing learning, praying, studying, I get along with everyone, life is good. But, think about this. Am I finite or infinite? We're finite. Hashem is what? Hashem is infinite. So now, compared to infinite, is my avoid, is my work complete? No. It possibly could be a sin. Because in the world of the infinite, you don't even know, you, 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 how, you, you're not even on the first step. We are living in this world on a finite level. So whatever you're doing, it's great. But guess what? Could you be billions of times better? Could you do more? Absolutely. So based on that, you say to yourself, oh my gosh. On one hand, life is great. I'm learning, I'm praying, I'm studying, I'm doing mitzvot. But I feel like I'm an oivid, I'm an idach. I'm far away, I'm lost, I'm dejected. Why? Because compared to Hashem, what am I doing? And by doing that, you actually awaken and you draw down the big shayfar. So again, this is a major chiddush, this is a major powerful idea of the Rebbe. What's the Rebbe saying like this? You talk about shayfar gadol, how did we learn until now that Hashem is going to inspire us to turn to Him? That's what we learned until now. The Rebbe says, no. We, everyone, could create an awareness that you're an oivah the nidach, that you're lost and you're disconnected. Why? Because compared to Hashem, what am I? Compared to the infinite light, what have I accomplished already? When a person does that, now you go under the classification of an oivah the nidach. You're lost and you're dejected and disconnected and alienated. Once you do that, whoa, you draw down the big shoifer. So now, based on that, is oiv dim and edachim, that they hear the big shoifer, is it a gift from above or it's something we created? We created it. So just like Rosh Hashanah is, is a Rus of the the same thing also when Mashiach comes, by creating the oivid and nidach mindset, that's a Rus of the 
Now, <clears throat> so you're going to say, what do you mean? But, but Yitaka means Hashem is giving it to you. Exactly. Because Yitaka means Hashem is giving it to me. I'm realizing that anything and everything that I do in this world, how am I doing it? How am I able to achieve anything? It's only from Hashem. So I pray, and I learn, and I do mitzvahim, and I help people, and I do all the mitzvahs. I do whatever I can. But it's all from Hashem. And matter of fact, compared to Hashem, it's nothing. So it creates a real suicidal tata. That's number one. And I realize that everything I have is from Hashem. So it's, it is a Yisrusel Atata, but the Yisrusel tells me that everything is from Hashem. And that's why it, it makes sense, Yitaka, because you come to the awareness that Hashem is one that's really blowing, blowing everything. Hashem is one that's making it happen. Now, in other words, what does Bittl mean? Bittl means... And Derb explains it very powerfully. It's actually a unique way Derb explains it in a very, very, in a very, very meaningful way. He says, when you're makir and you're margish. Makir means intellectually. You come to the awareness, intellectual awareness, and you feel that all my accomplishments that I'm accomplishing is not because it's my talent. It's chesed of Hashem. It's 100% everything that I'm doing, everything I'm accomplishing, is only from the chesed of Hashem. It's thanks to Hashem that we able to do it. Um, so therefore, even though it's my avoida, I pray and I learn and I daven and I do whatever I do, whatever I'm doing, true I'm doing it. So it has the component, the real asurus of the But because I, I created the, the awareness, which is a true awareness, everything I have is from Hashem, that turns it into as if it's a, it's a Rusul Leila, because it is coming from Hashem. Now, so now again, it's interesting, because the, the Rebbe keeps on bringing in from different Rebbeim. Alter we did, Mittal Rebbe, Tzemach Tzedek, Rebbe Marash, Rebbe Hashab, and now the Rebbe is bringing in his father-in-law, the Friedrich Rebbe, and he says like this. And he quotes from his father-in-law that says that when Mashiach comes, and they're going to sound this big shoifer, it's going to awaken in every single Jew, every Jew, when we say every means literally, every Jew, any part of the world, every Jew, and the Rebbe's, and the Rebbe's father-in-law says, including those that are lost, including those that are dejected and disconnected and alienated, they are going to hear that shaifer and they're going to want to go out of Gullus, they're gonna to wanna to go to Jerusalem, and they're going to want to prostrate themselves to Hashem. And the, Rebbe, the Friedrich explains, because when the shoifer is going to blow, what's going to happen is, it's not like it's going to create something external from them. It's going to reveal their true will of the Jew. Powerful. Again, when Mashiach comes, by Yoimah, who you talk about Shefer Gadol, everybody, all over the world, whoever it may be, is going to hear the shayfar, and it's not going to, God forbid, cause a fear or something external. It's going to bring out from within them their natural will to be with Hashem. And based on the Shabbat says, this is the difference between when Mene Yisrael left Mitzrayim and when Mashiach comes. Why did we leave Mitzrayim? Because Hashem revealed Himself. We didn't have a choice. The life was big. As the verse says, Mashcheni Acharech Hashem just drew us out. When we left Mitzrayim, what did we have to do with it? Hashem came in, smoke and light show, excitement, all the miracles, all the plagues, all the revelations splitting the sea, and we just went, we just went with the flow. When Mashiach comes, it's going to be our will, like the previous server explained. We are going to want to leave. The, the shofar is going to blow, but we're going to want to leave. Because that's really who we are. We're really connected with Hashem. It's our avoida. It's the avoida sa'adam, just like Rosh Hashanah. When Mashiach comes, it's going to be our avoida. So you have literally someone that's lost and dejected, etc., so their revelation is going to be after the shofar is blowing. 
I know it's like this. You have, you create your own wanting to leave, but someone that's really, and doesn't really have it, so the shafer blows, but what, when it blows, it doesn't pull him out. It's gonna waken up the spark that we has, that a person has from within, and that's gonna cause them, that they're gonna to wanna to leave. <clears throat> Which basically is saying is that it's gonna be our avoida. When Mashiach comes, it's gonna be our avoida. And based on Shabbat says, that when that day comes, when Shia comes, you talk about Shafer Gadol, the big Shafer is going to be sound, which means practically is it's going to blow by itself. That the end of Gallus, and Rebbe said this going back in Tafshin Chavches <clears throat> over 50 years ago, that um, in reference to many, many things, Rebbe said, in reference to many, many things, that the sound of the shofar already started. And obviously since then, many, many years passed. And the Rebbe said, we saw literally that by the sounding of the big shofar, many, many Jews that were lost, alienated, foreign, God forbid, were awakened to do tshuva, to turn to Hashem through the big shofar. And the, 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 we all know that the Rebbe said this discourse, it was right after the Six-Day War. And we all know the Six-Day War was a big scare for the Jewish people. But on the other hand, we saw the tremendous miracles of Hashem. And we all know tremendous amounts of people returned to Hashem. Why? Because they heard the big shofar. The shofar they heard, obviously everything comes from Hashem. The Gashmi, the shofar they heard was a Six-Day War. But they saw Yad Hashem. And that caused many, many people to return to Hashem. So therefore, what we need to do is, since we know Mashiach is coming, the shofar is going to be sound. And once the shofar is sound, we're going to hear it. It's going to cause us to, to return to Hashem. But the Rebbe says, don't wait till then. We can start doing the avoida. What's the avoida now? Just to be bittal. And the Rebbe spells it out. What does it mean to be bittal? The awareness, the intellectual awareness, and feeling it, that everything that goes on in our life, for ourselves, for other people, and anything that we've accomplished is not because we have these tremendous gifts. All, everything that we have is only from Hashem. It's all a gift from Hashem. So the Rebbe says, one second, if you're gonna start thinking, guess what? Everything I've done, everything I learned, everything I've prayed, and all my actions, and all my mitzvahs, and all my great things, it's all, it's all Hashem. So where's my inspiration? I want to be inspired. I did it. I was successful. So Rebbe says, no, on the contrary. When you, do, when, you, when you come to the awareness that all your gifts come from Hashem, you're actually going to have much more energy. Why? And Rebbe says like this. Because when a person does things with your own energy and with your own strength, or at least you believe it's your energy and your strength, so your avoida is <clears throat> It's limited. Because we're limited. How far can you go already? And even as it says in Shema, b'chol avavcha with your heart, b'chol nashim, b'chol ma'oitcha with all your might, you're giving it all you have, you got. So Rebbe says, "Ma'oitcha ma'oitcha means ma'oitcha, your might, your strength. So you limit it. However, when you realize that everything you have comes from Hashem, and it's, a, it's godly powers, so you know what happens then? You able to break through any limitations, and then your avoid is how." So Rebbe says the gift that you get when you realize, yes, it's your avoid, you're learning, you're praying, you're studying, you're doing mitzvot, and whatever you're doing, all these tremendous things. But where is it coming from? It's coming from Hashem. That puts you into an infinite mode because you're connected to Hashem. So there's no limits. You can learn off the charts. You can pray off the charts. You can do mitzvahs off the charts. You can be successful off the charts. Off the charts, literally. And never finishes off the Hasidic Dosh, he says like this. Even though, as we said in, uh, in the beginning and throughout, that the whole avoid of Rosh Hashanah is, is by reach, reaching from the essence of your heart, the depth of your heart. And through that, you reach the depth of Hashem. So you can say, okay, let me spend the whole day Rosh Hashanah praying and beseeching to Hashem and saying, tell him what you're supposed to do. And guess what? 
you're going to forget to blow the shofar. I'm talking about the second day of Rosh Hashanah this year because it's Sunday, but otherwise normally it's two days. But nevertheless, you have to blow the physical shofar. Why? If it's all about premius halev, reaching the premius of Hashem, returning to Hashem and realizing it's everything from Hashem, why blow a physical shofar? And the Rebbe answer is very simple because it's brought down in Kabbalah and it says, Asiya hi le'ela. Action is always the highest. Why? Because when you do a mitzvah, you're actually bringing Hashem down into the lowest, which takes you to the highest. So, you, so therefore, even though it's, the inspiration is amazing, and we learned this beautiful Hasidic discourse, you've got to remember the bowl of the shofar, you've got to hear the shofar. Because action is the most important thing, that's one reason. Second reason, the Rebbe says, because what are we reaching out? The premium slave to the premium slave of Hashem, the Ratzon Hashem. So you want the Ratzon Hashem to stay on high, you want it to come down to this world. You want to feel it in this world. In order to bring the Ratzon Hashem into this world, you have, to do the, you, you have to mirror it up. You have to also blow the shofar. So by blowing the shofar, you draw down the spiritual energy into this world. And the same thing the Rebbe says also. When Mashiach comes, by Yoyim Ahu, you talk about shofar Gadol. So it's not enough what we did till now. But it has, that Mashiach is going to have to blow the shofar. Not only for the elite, but for everybody. And in a way that everyone is supposed to hear it. All, all people, even those that are lost, alienated, dejected, etc. Why? Because when you blow the shofar, it's going to accomplish, by the physical shofar, it's going to accomplish that every single one, wherever they are all over the world, are physically going to come to prostrate themselves in the holy mountain, in Israel, in Yerushalayim, in literally Yerushalayim, and the Rebbe finishes off with Mashiach, Tidkenu, that's going to bring us standing upright and proud. And the Rebbe always finishes off classically, Ba'agal Dan, Bekarev Mamish, very, very soon and very, very quickly. So, this is a very, very important Hasidic discourse, and there's tremendous, powerful lessons in reference to Rosh Hashanah, that we have to reach our depth, to reach Hashem's depth, but I think also one, I mean, take away many, many lessons from here. But I think one of the most powerful lessons is that through continuing to learn and to pray and to do mitzvot, but doing it with bittel, realizing that all the gifts that we have is a gift from Hashem, we will be able to become infinite type of people that nothing could hold us back from doing tremendous and great things. And then we'll all merit. By Yom Ahu Yitok for Gadol. We're going to hear that beautiful shofar that will inspire us to even go, even go higher and we'll be connected, hopefully, very, very soon, as the Rebbe says, with Mashiach, and we'll be able to all celebrate Roshana together in Yerushalayim, Yer Kodesh. I want to wish each and every one of you a ksiva v'achsima toiva. It should be signed and sealed for a good year. L'shana toiva masuka. You should have a good year. It should be a sweet year. And anything that you dream of and anything you want, that Hashem should give you with tremendous abundance Begashmius, Baruchnius, and with the greatest gift, we'll all be reunited in Eretz Yisrael, Mashiach Tzidkenu. Have a great and blessed new year.